Hey guys, welcome to Plug with Alex. If you want to know how to make this amazing FOE row, stay tuned. Now let's jump into it. So what do you need? You need two to three bell peppers. Um, you can add more or less, just depending on how much you are cooking. You'll need one red onion, please. I mean, if you have white, that one is okay too, but I prefer red. You'll need two to three habanero peppers, more or less depending on you. And you'll need tomato paste. Now, this is not for now, but this is for later. So please keep this in mind. So what I'm doing here is I need to roast my bell peppers and my onions and habanero. Put it in the oven or air fryer, whatever, for about 10 minutes, and then we'll check on it. Okay, so after 20 minutes, this is what it's looking like. Let's go there. We are coming. <laughs> All right, so now at this point, what I'm doing is just putting everything in a bowl, just letting it sit because I don't need it right now. So go ahead and get that together and let it sit. As I've said, go ahead and put your bell pepper to the side. For this segment, you'll need some crayfish, you'll need two Maggi cubes, some dried pepper, thyme, iru, which is optional, chopped onions, you'll need half and half canola and palm oil, you'll need shrimp, again, that's optional, a goosey, and lastly, stockfish, again, that's optional. Moving right along into these onions, honey, yes. Go ahead and start dicing them up. I'll have the complete measurements down below. You don't have to dice them up any specific type of way, but once you have done that, put it to the side. Okay, y'all, so let's go ahead and move on. At this point, go ahead and put your pot on the stove and turn it on to medium to high heat. Get that palm oil and canola oil mixture I mentioned earlier. Go ahead and pour that in there. So once that is in the pot, please do not let this thing burn. It just let this thing just jelly get hot. Okay, so at this point, go ahead and get your roasted bell pepper mix. Put that into the blender. I use um, pureed tomatoes, and this is about a third of a cup. Go ahead and put that in there. I don't like my mixture too watery because F O is typically not too watery. So go ahead and put the lid and everything on there. I have uh, my garlic in here as well, but that's optional, which is why I didn't even mention it. Go ahead and get this baby rolling, please. No time to delay. Let's eat now. Go ahead and put your onions into the oil. At this point, the oil is obviously pretty hot. So remember I said it doesn't have to be cut a particular way because it will shall be consumed. I be. So mix this pretty well because you don't want your onions to burn. I have, again, reduced my oil to a low medium. And also what you want to go ahead and start doing is, um, oh, before I forget, I did put in my garlic, but I'm not going to emphasize too heavily on that because I know a lot of people don't take it. But if you wish, put it as I've said earlier, make sure you stay with this and continue to mix it because you don't want it to burn. So now go ahead and get your tomato paste. Put your tomato paste inside of the oil. Now, again, please do not leave this thing go because it will burn. So keep mixing it and mixing it. Once it starts to pan out, you'll see the consistency. It won't be as chunky. So let's continue to mix this for about five minutes or so. Now go ahead and add your crayfish into the mix. This is where things are seriously happening. So once you have your crayfish, guys, go ahead and add your iru if you choose to do so. Now, this will elevate something as in kilo de. So guys, <laughs> add iru if you like it. So once you have it, all of that, go ahead and stir this bad boy. The reason why I add iru at this time is because it seriously unlocks a load of flavors, guys. So go ahead and keep mixing and keep stirring. 
if you can see, you'll see that um, some of the tomato paste pieces, I kind of use the spoon a bit to like break it up a little bit just to get a good even mix. So make sure you do that and it should look something like this. Now go ahead and get that lovely bell pepper tomato mix. See how thick and chunky it is? It should resemble something like that. I place it inside of the pot. So you see how I'm placing it? Don't mix it just yet, just place it. Okay, so continue placing this. Now, it's important to note that I did increase the heat back to high. So you wanna like let it sit for maybe like, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, just to sit. Once it's, you know, seated. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and mix it. <laughs> I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Okay, so as we can see, things are certainly progressing fabulously. Continue mixing. Um, let it sit for about five to ten minutes, right? So you can see, see how it's looking. Can you see? Hey, Jesus. So once that is done, we'll, what we'll do is get a strainer so we can sieve out the chicken stock or meat stock. The reason why I sieve it is because of portion control. Sometimes I don't want all like the remainings, like the thyme and everything inside. So that's why I sieve it because I will certainly still add more and you don't want to overdo it. So you'll see me adding more Maggie and things like that. So that's why. But I mean, so I know you because I eyeball it so much, but you can still taste it to see. And let this go for about 10 minutes with the lid not on it because you don't want to add more moisture. After that is well stirred and mixed together, let's go ahead and add the stockfish. The reason why we're doing this now is because the stockfish has to get a little bit softer. If you try to bite into it in its natural state, you may not like it. And I don't advise that anyway. So go ahead and get the stockfish into what we have going on here. Make sure everything is well incorporated to ensure that you don't have some pieces that are softer than others. I let this boil for about 5 to 10 minutes with the lid on the pot just to kind of speed up the process. So just watch what I'm doing here. You'll see what I'm saying. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. Let's check it out. And oh my God, y'all, we like seriously, I don't know where we at, but we on another level. So go ahead and mix this and just to make sure you like what you see. Um, at this point, go ahead and taste it just to see, you know, in terms of flavor, if it's giving you vibes or, you know, things like that. But it should definitely be just about spot on. However, I saw that mine needed a little bit of salt. So I went in and added a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. Now you can hold off on adding any further seasonings until you add meats, but I didn't have too many meats, so I kind of knew that I didn't really need, you know, to wait to that point. Okay guys, so what we're doing here now is adding the egusi. As you can see, I'm not adding a lot, and it's just a simple fact that egusi really spreads. But if that's something that you really prefer, then definitely please feel free to add more or less, just depending on your satisfaction. Now make sure, just how you saw me do the bell pepper, I kind of wait it, I let it sit. Do the same with that goosey, then mix it. And as you can see here, you see that it's starting to spread. So once you have everything well incorporated, let it remain untouched for about five minutes with the lid not on so and put this on low to medium and as you can see after about five minutes or so 
You see how it's looking? The water has evaporated a good bit. But don't worry if you feel like it's a little bit too dry because by the time we add spinach and other things, it will definitely be replenished. So whatever meats you are going to use, go ahead and add them in. Two days prior to this, I made stew, so I still had some goat meat. So I added that into it and go ahead and get this mixed in. Now, once you have everything well incorporated, please do put the lid on it. This way, all the flavors can really marry together and you'll really, really see the difference. So let's just keep mixing and also let's put the lid on it for 10 minutes on medium so while this is going, it is important to know that I am using frozen spinach. So I thawed it out and I went ahead and drained out all the excess water and set it to the side. So if you're using fresh spinach or whatever else you're using, please act accordingly. And you'll see what I'm saying here. So go ahead and add in your spinach. Guys, like at this point... <laughs> work is complete we only have one or two more things to do so go ahead and start adding in your spinach and once you have that go ahead and mix it once everything is well incorporated put the lid on it turn it down to low and let it go for about five minutes so this is what it looks like after five minutes let's go ahead and get the shrimp in there now this is absolutely last loss because you don't want it to overcook so go ahead and get that mixed in keep in mind i still have my temperature set too low so go ahead and get this well incorporated we are just about done last thing <laughs> let's go ahead and put the lid back on it so that the shrimp can cook properly you see after 10 minutes this is what it's looking like oh can you see can you see? I ate doom. Mm. Let's go ahead and mix it one last time just to make sure that you know something don't it's just, it's just, it's just doing me somehow. So as we can see the shrimp is ready. I hope you guys have your starch or rice or whichever whatever you choose ready. Because for me, I'm ready. You. Go ahead and plate your food and everything so you can dive in. So let me know whatever you guys use so I can sharply join you. <laughs> so let me know what your thoughts are. So make sure to share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until the next one.